Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear, hear us? us? Yeah. Test, test, test. So, can you hear us? Okay. Alright, is everything recording? Yeah, you're I won't do it as awesome. loud. Gentle, it is in my ears. Oh. <laughs> So cute. That was the cutest so. sound I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Right, you got to be gentle with me. I'm really, really shy in case you hadn't noticed. Yeah, I'm a little shy too. <laughs> I think I'm ready. <coughs> Clear my throat. <coughs> not bad. I'm sorry. Is it going? Is it all going? We're live? No. no. <laughs> for later. So That's the vape nation. <laughs> oh my god, that Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> Can I do this? Yes. Oh, man. Jocko messed up my thing. Jimmy broke it. No, 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 no. Jocko broke it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Why did you guys come to Maker Central? Uh, honestly, why wouldn't you? It's it's arguably the biggest event of the year. It's not, the UK has never had anything like this, and probably will never have anything like this again unless it's been put on again. Um, Nick has done an incredible, incredible job with his team putting this event on, and I can only hope that it happens again. If not in the UK, somewhere else. Quite honestly, you wanted to, I guess, be part of it. And again, not sure if it's you know this will continue on or not. And uh, it's been a it's been fantastic. Uh, yeah. Two days, the last the last two days have been stellar in my opinion. And all, I got uh, an email from Nick that said that um, he wanted to do it. And the truth of it was, I've been wanting to come to England for as long as I could possibly yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. And so it was super easy to say, yeah, I totally want to do that. That is my motivation for finally coming. And um, we turned it into a, a, a trip, you know. So we're going to come from here and actually do a little touristy thing afterwards. And we weren't expecting this to be that big, if I'm honest. I wasn't expecting it to be what it was. And we just finished, we just got out of it, and it was phenomenal. So this was the afterthought, if I'm honest, of what we originally came here for, which was a vacation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just became the pinnacle of the trip so far I mean it's been really cool uh, we're inundated with you know folks that said that they've watched us mm -hmm. and that you know enjoy what I do and it's just been really really humbling but fun what made you decide that you wanted to start putting your content on YouTube we so we we learned a lot from YouTube mm -hmm. um, when we uh, bought our first house, we fixed it up ourselves, and um, YouTube was a big resource for us, and we didn't really know how to do anything. Um, before starting YouTube, we actually started a blog because like, we wanted to share what we were learning as we were learning it, and we did it just as a hobby. But then when we decided we wanted to um, like take the stuff we like to do and try to turn it into an actual business we could do together, um, we instead of going the blog route, we went the YouTube route. Mm -hmm. um, one, just to try it out. We've never done a video before, and we thought it would be fun. Um, but it also seemed to be the direction that um, like content creation was going towards in yeah. um, video form. And we wanted to like build up something that lasts for a long time, and something that would be like a business that we could run together that would allow us to make it our full-time job. So we just saw that potential with YouTube and video, and content creation on YouTube and stuff. So. I got to the point where, yeah, I had, you know, an order for 50 pens that I needed to be done in a week and 20 bracelets and 40 boxes and I was making good money and I was doing the work, but I was hating it. I hated the shop. And so I just closed the shop down and uh, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I started putting stuff back on YouTube was to try to find the joy of it again. And you know it's fun it added a new dynamic to the shop it wasn't just about making the object it was about oh my gosh am i in focus mm -hmm. you know do i 
do I film this part? Do I not film this part? And so, it, you know, it kind of added an extra level to it and made it new again and fun. Has this experience changed you or impacted you? Well, for me, I mean, it's completely changed my life. I mean, one of the things that I have a tendency to fall into is um, kind of a, almost like a depressive state. Uh, if I'm not doing something new, if I'm not learning something new, if I'm not engaged in something. And <clears throat> I figured this out about myself way back in like 2003. And so every time I see that kind of a phase coming on, I immediately immerse myself in something new. And that process of learning, it engages a different part of your brain and it just overwrites whatever part of your brain is that's causing you to feel down or upset or hurt or you know I went through a, a pretty severe car accident back in 2003 and the injury part wasn't that big a deal but I was going through a lawsuit at the time and that lawsuit really just put me in a really negative place and I mean for like six months I didn't even really feel like getting off the couch my wife was really worried about me and you know I don't like to be like that I don't like to be that guy that you know your wife's just looking at you and pitying you yeah, I want to be the guy that is bringing my family up and, and supporting my family and being engaged in what my family's doing. And so at that time, I, it, uh, at that time it wasn't making things, but it was uh, another uh, hobby that I had. And I just was having to learn how to do something that I had never done before. And the process of that, I had just been so engaged in it. I couldn't think about all of the underlying issues I mean, because they were still there, they were still present, but it was like, I didn't have to worry about them when I was learning. I was completely immersed in that process. Mainly just being part of a larger community, I feel like, because before, I mean, once, high, once I left high school, I'm, I'm not complaining, but it was me and my wife and kids and get caught up in that kind of stuff. You don't really have too many friends outside of that, so this is even though everyone's all over the place, it's people I talk to on a regular basis. So that part impacts me of people that I, if I have problems uh, on a project, even if it's not for YouTube uh, that I'm selling, I, there's many people that I could call or talk to to figure out how to get something done. Oh, it changed the complete, it changes how I look into things. Like um, you go around and you see things and you don't, you don't just think like, oh, that's cool. You always think like how can I make that or how right. can I make something like that how can it be a good video yeah <laughs> exactly how can I do something as cool as that but different yeah it's true it's always like it changes the way you look at things the minute you see something cool you go hmm how can I appropriate that <laughs> <laughs> one way or how another how can I make it better or worse yeah it's true I, I went to YouTube because it was the uh, it was the opposite of TV mm -hmm. it was like completely democratic and anybody could do it and it's still like that yeah, yeah, it still is. Yeah, and uh, I, I say this, I'll say it again. I, I didn't realize the impact that would have on other people's lives, mm -hmm. and it's the reason why I keep doing it. What has just making things, you, your shop, uh, uh, changed in your lives? What difference has it made in your life? Um, I'll, I'll say a lot for me. I mean, I was, I've got quite a, a couple of health issues, and I was kind of in a, a bit of a dark place if you like and when I kind of found the community it, it kind of it kind of I don't want to say it gave me a reason to get up in the morning but it kind of did you know um, I was kind of waking up and smiling you know it, the term found the smile if you like mm. that was it that was kind of it you know it's kind of like I, I, I wake up and all of a sudden all of a sudden I see like 10 or 12 notifications and they're all from people saying look can you edit a photo for me do you know what I mean I want to see like Doressa's head on a chicken or something like that do you know what I mean and it's all like yeah no worries I'll have that done in a minute do you know what I mean and it's all like funny sh stupid but funny things and they wake up and it just oh mate smile on the face and that makes a difference you know um, so yeah it's and ever since then I've just done nothing but really smile really and I don't think about them dark times no more mm. it's that's way in the past way behind me and it's I'm looking at looking at the front of the car now look at long road ahead nothing behind me
How about you? I think I'd probably have to agree with this guy over here just as far as letting things bother you in life, uh, getting too wrapped up with, you know, issues. You see a lot of issues on Facebook. I, I've kind of been one to distant, distance myself from Facebook and over... That's that was another reason I started my channel. I was tired of reading the news to all the negativity. Yeah. And if you allow yourself to be swallowed up by that, it's a challenge to uh, be happy. So um, I found with, with being part of the community, that's definitely helped to take me away from a, a negative place in life that just wants to drag you down in the hole. It'd make you feel good about, you know, like Jamie said, waking up. You get a message from one of your buddies and they're asking you, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you working on? Has, has the content creation, the YouTube channel, and all the production you've done, has that changed your perspective on what's valuable? It has in like, uh, like, I... It's, it's honestly made it hard to play video games a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes it hard to like, um... Yeah, I guess I'm yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it's like because like making content, it, it's so beneficial to us and to the community. And there's like all these great things about making content and being productive. It makes and it hard to take a break. It makes it hard to take breaks. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. So there's definitely like things that we used to value, like free time, that kind of get pushed by the wayside a little bit. Um, but I think also things like you know making stuff is always been kind of like a hobby and um, one cool thing about this like doing it as a business is we can put a little bit more value to it and we can spend a little bit more on that tool because it's for work you know <laughs> like, <laughs> you know so things do kind of like shift around a little bit yeah um, like I haven't bought new clothes in a long time but we bought a lot of tools <laughs> <laughs> yep. you know your, your focus kind of shifts I value knowledge now more than I did in the past I used to be like I don't need to know how to do that. Mm. Nah, I don't care. But now I thirst for new things. Because, partly because it's obtainable. Where in the past they'd be like, ah, CNC is for rich people. You know, but now, <laughs> <laughs> like now I can do that's it. That's changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, a plasma cutter is for rich guys, you know, or, you know, that's for like a factory situation where someone's bringing in, you know, $100,000 a month in their prop shop or whatever. But now because people gift me this stuff and, and I have deals with people. I Now I pay more attention. Like when I was in the shop the other day and I had these hydraulics around me, there was a time and it's still part of my makeup where I look around and I go, boy, I wish I could have this. <laughs> and now I can have it. Yeah. And so I just go, hey, can I buy one of these? They're like, sure. You know, where in the past, it, it would always have been like, no, I, I can't spend any money. I, can't spend money. <laughs> I gotta save every penny I have because tomorrow I'll be broke. With YouTube, but internet in general, like ignorance is a choice. Yep. You can learn whatever you want. There's no excuses. It's free. It's out there. You can have it in your phone, in your computer, everywhere. So it's super easy. I just made a product, and I did that with a 3D printer, like a prototype that with a 3D printer and a free software. So anyone can do that. Yeah, that's amazing. That's true. Ignorance is a choice. It yeah. But the community is just amazing. Like, like we said in the beginning of this, where we'll go to any part of the world, any part of the United States, call up a, a meetup. Ten people at the very least will show up now yeah. anywhere we go, and we have a good time just exchanging ideas, and mm -hmm. and it's it's just so rewarding. Now it's like now anywhere I go in the United States, I think, oh, should I have a meetup tonight? And then I meet you know five, ten, eight, twenty people mm -hmm. that do what we all do, and it's just great. Yeah, yeah but I mean, even if you're a smaller YouTuber. You can like you make new friends. Yep. Like it's incredible. I know a lot of people. They're like my closest friends now, and it's only about because you know we make YouTube videos or yep. we watch the same. Most of my closest or, friends now are people I met through YouTube. Even the guys I grew up with. Like, so yeah. you make money with that? <laughs> How do you make money with YouTube? Yeah, but it's great. It's like a big family for real. It uh, is. It's stupid because a lot of people say, "Oh, your family, bro. You know, you my family." But it's actually I'm. I think in our community more than others. Like I don't know if they have the same thing with the vape nation, but <laughs> for, for us, like we are actually old friends. <laughs> I think it's amazing. Like you have something, uh, something sad happening in your life, like maybe happened to you, and we are we feel bad. We feel good for your good things. It's like you know. Yeah. 
it's good stuff. It's great. I mean, like what's going on with uh, with Simone? You know, Simone's going yeah. through this brain too. I don't know Simone personally, but I feel like it's if like I we saw do. her, we'd just be like, you know, we're just old friends. But you know, it's just it's dramatic and sad and exciting, and you know, we're all kind of taking the ride. Well, for me, it changed everything. Like, I mean, career obviously, but also like on a personal level. I used to be, especially like as a teenager and then studying where you don't really have a focus and you're like not sure who you are and what you're good at, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. I used to be super impatient. I had a pretty, like is it a temper? Like mm -hmm. when you, Very yeah, yeah, quick exactly. Yeah, quick to be angry. Um, didn't know what to do with myself. And it, I think it's because I did not have this outlet and this mm -hmm. expression. I still don't know what I'm trying to say with all these things, but I feel like I have a, like a, what is that, like a ventile? Like a venting. venting. Yeah, yeah, yeah venting. exactly. So I have an outlet with making, and it makes me feel so much better. And I'm so much more patient, I'm relaxed, I'm much more confident, I'm much more positive. So making has really changed everything for me. Now, so, actually, so, so much of like what I do now, <laughs> so much of my life in the last three years has revolved around decisions that I have made based on Ben saying like, do more. Mm -hmm. And he has been saying that to me my entire life since w when he first started going to college and he's seven years older than I, I am, he would give me his old textbooks. He'd be like, I think you'll find these interesting. My college textbooks, he's like, read them. Mm -hmm. You know, he's always been pushing me mm -hmm. because I am a person who does not have a lot of self-motivation. Mm -hmm. And like I have like zero natural self confidence, like maybe even really? negative. It's really? like oh my gosh, yes. And hmm. so he is someone who's always been like, you could be doing so much, like you don't push yourself. Mm -hmm. So he's just always in the background with like one foot on my back, being like, come on, come on, go. And it's great because it frustrates me because I just want to turtle mm -hmm. and like not look at the world. But he pushes me out there to do things. And um, although I never intended on doing a video, like I'm beginning to feel more comfortable doing it and like trying to find what is my own style, my own stride. Obviously I take a lot from what he does. Mm. The white backgrounds and the fast motion and all of that stuff. But um, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like so much of what I do <laughs> is from him as a big brother. Yeah. Dude, I have the same experience though. My brother is not a content creator, but he's al always influenced me yeah. big time like whenever I didn't know what to do it was like he I don't know he just showed up he materialized said, like maybe you should study design like, all right maybe you should do that like maybe you should get into yeah. film yeah it's really it's really nice yeah, yeah. having a big brother is, is a nice thing it is it, it really is um and I, I like for myself my now three-ish year journey it's been really amazing because what started out has been literally pushing me to do something I didn't want to do. Like right now, I'm here in another country. I just spoke on my first panel. Like Ben's not even here. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of that's awesome. awesome. Like I feel I'm feeling pretty good right now. Now that the talk is over and I'm not stressed about it anymore, I'm feeling pretty good. Good. <laughs> like it was good. awesome. So cool. yeah, that's that's my big takeaway that I'm still trying to learn every day. When you guys hit a, a, a wall, whether it be energy or family. What keeps you going? Keeps you mm. <laughs> it used to be chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, hmm. Hmm. I think sometimes these trips actually, like I feel like oftentimes he starts to get um, a little run down, a little tired, yeah. um, a little weary, and even coming almost, like right before coming, it's just like, it like comes at the perfect time, it also comes at like a hardest time where you're yeah. like, you're already tired. But then coming um, and being around other creators and, and just getting to talk to people face to face, it always like is super uplifting and really encouraging and kind of gives everybody that jump start. Like you forget time and space and you're just enjoying conversation. Yeah. I mean, I, actually, before this trip, I was at a point where I was really tired just exhausted overall and I was worried about scheduling and I was worried about production and I have a, an employee now and I think about payroll and I think about it, it was just it was starting to get to me a little bit and having time to not think about it I think is going to make it easier to think about those things when I get back mm -hmm. so just 
like we have to do this more because yeah. it's been hugely important I think for my mental health to like just like leave it all there come enjoy time with her and now I can go back to it with a more clear head yeah so maybe like on a regular basis like scheduling our date nights and yeah. instead of just like haphazardly we should probably make some time <laughs> out just just the two of us <laughs> you know yeah. it happens but um or maybe like taking an overnight somewhere yeah. um, personally and then I think like as far as like the day-to-day like I hit walls constantly with patients with kids or just energy or whatever I know when we lived in Savannah and I was a part of like the roller derby community like knowing that I had that practice to look forward to um, was helpful when I knew that my patience was starting to thin I'm like okay you know I just need to keep it together in a little while I'm gonna have this break and so now that I don't have that right now um, I think both of us just need to figure out how to take a breath sometimes whether it's like taking a walk or just catching up with each other and taking a moment like even if it's like closing the pantry door and like giving each other a hug while the kids are like going crazy (laughs) around us you know like whatever it is that helps us take a take a breath take a break and like reset for a second because I mean yeah I think having a change some sort of a break the moment you know go do something different even if it's for just a moment my friend calls it changing the atmosphere like sometimes like even someone just coming over unexpectedly or or at the last minute for a cup of coffee like while you're doing your laundry somehow that just changes the atmosphere and so it's just finding a way to like break the atmosphere when it's starting to feel like it's overwhelming or feel like it's too much or you know I mean basically like for me it's it's funny because it's every week it's the same thing I finish my video on Sunday and then Sunday afternoon I usually take off like that's my that's my weekend and then on Monday, I know, like, okay, it's a fresh week, I have to start again. And then I get super depressed. I'm like, I don't have one single idea left. That's it. It's yeah. the end of my career. I don't think I can even get out of bed. That's it. Like, I'm worthless. I'm useless. I, I live in a tiny house. I started all of this. I don't know how to finish it. I can never work on a single piece again. I'm I do so not have the strength. Right now. <laughs> I do not have the strength to get out of bed and make a coffee. Or maybe I could build this lamp. So let's do this. So it's usually like, I mean, just the opportunity that I have all week to build something, basically. I mean, I don't really have all week, but I have a week to build it. And this is my job, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of, y- you're in this, in this mode of having ideas once a week or daily or monthly or whatever. You train, you, you, you're training yourself to have ideas. So usually I can rely on myself that after my Monday morning depression, Maybe Tuesday, the latest. I'm back on track. I'm back in the shop, mm-hmm. and start again. Um, what what kind of effect do you think that? What kind of a difference do you think this conference is is making on four thousand people? Mm-hmm. I think it's showing people that they're not alone. Because yeah. I talked to so many people yesterday who said, you know, I'm from Sweden or Germany or England or all over Europe. And one of and our new friends is from Malta, and he didn't know that there was anyone yeah. else making anything like he might be and then he overheard a conversation and recognized the language they were speaking and and they realized they were from the same place and now he there's three of them that are all here for and this. I think I think that happened at, at a national level throughout Europe so there's all these people who are like he recognized his language there's mm-hmm. other people who are like heard people talking about Sweden and they're like oh I'm from Sweden awesome but then it's also happening at a continental level too where they're all like wait you mean Germany and Sweden have makers, and like we can we can get together like this and have four thousand like it's blowing everybody's mind that there are other people like them. Well, and the fact that you can just the internet <laughs> and like yeah. you can talk yeah. to people from anywhere and realize that you guys really enjoy this this thing, you know, and and I don't know, just I don't know, it's, yeah. it's just crazy. <laughs> I, I think it's gonna like just help people realize that they're not by themselves, and stuff like this is probably gonna become a lot more common over here. I hope. And there'll be more learning and sharing. Like, yeah. everyone's going to be starting to follow each other's channels. Those that yeah. have them are on Instagram, and they're going to, you know, just more things will be shared, more friendships made, uh, you know, more learning and growing. Yeah. It's pretty cool. More community. Yeah. After the show, I hope it's inspiring. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope people actually see the things that they've seen and take that home with them and, and start learning how to do something that maybe they hadn't done before. I think, I think there should be a lot of people that are doing something new for the first time 
as a result of being at the show. That was what I was about to say. <clears throat> People are not connected. To I hope you. that it, it cross pollinates. Oh yeah, yeah. That's funny because we do have a really strong community in the U.S. and we get to meet each other Pretty at different yeah. events fairly frequently. And you know, we've met several times. I've met Drew probably. I mean, we're only an 20 hour and half times. away. Yeah. yeah, we're fairly close, so we've met a lot of times. But I've even met people from England, Germany, multiple times. But that's because a lot of them come over yep. to the U.S. And I'm thankful that they do because it makes it easy on me. But at the same time, I felt when this opportunity came up, it, it made me feel really excited to be able to return that you know, opportunity to come back over here and, and spend time with people that I, right. I call friends. Yeah, yeah, it's like the launching point for a lot of relationships. Right. That's a, that's actually a, it's a great that's a great aspect. I hadn't I hadn't thought that through quite as much. I've just been in the moment, enjoying it. Yeah, trying to get as much video as I can. So when I leave here, I can go back and just look at it and say, "Wow, yeah. I was here for the first Maker Central." Hopefully, it's not. Hopefully, it's not only. One. Yeah, I Hopefully think the hope is that it's not the only. I hope they had a good time. Yeah. I mean, I hope they come away thinking I'm a part of a community because I feel like we are. If you go into YouTube to someplace other than the maker spaces, you know, into a, a just a general, like a, a daily vlogger and you go into their comment section, it is a toxic place. Yeah. It is absolutely toxic. And every once in a while there's a positive comment. Yeah. And that is exactly inverted on our channels. Yeah. There's very few people that are toxic on our channels. Right. And that's, you. I've talked to a YouTube rep and she's just like, this is weird. <laughs> You're like one of the only communities that is like this. And uh, I hope that they feel like we were genuinely welcoming to them and that we genuinely can, can you know, connected Connect, with them yeah. because we did it made us happy yeah. we talked it about did. people we met last night yeah we you know we reminisced over this person yeah. or that person or this story mm -hmm. it was really fun for us it, it was. wasn't a drudgery at all you know we had a bunch of people come up to us and say i'm really really sorry for I wasting know. your time <laughs> you're like you're not wasting it's, my time yeah. this is great yeah. Yeah. and again we weren't expecting it to mm -hmm. be great mm -hmm. we came here so that we could have a trip to london <laughs> right and this became great yeah. it was really nice Hey everybody, I really hope that you enjoyed that video. Everybody that was participating in that, I really appreciate, really appreciate that they took the time to come in and answer some short questions. And I hope it inspired you. I hope that watching this encouraged you to go out and make something for yourself. These people really have a passion for what they do and they really have something that they strive for. So I encourage you to go show them some love and support for all the channels and handles that you saw right below them when they're being interviewed. Maker Central was terrific, but more important than the event, there were some lifelong friendships created. So I encourage you to share this video with someone that you want to inspire and go out and make some memories.